Okay, we're back, we're live, we're at ThinkTech. Here we are on a given Friday afternoon at the 3 o'clock block. We just finished with Willow Chang and Raj Kumar. That was a very interesting show. Lots of good advice, and he's doing good things for world peace. And now we're talking ThinkTech Talks. We're talking with Graham Silberman, uh, Workers on Call, which is very interesting. Sort of popped up in our radar. We wanted to know more about it, so we asked Graham to come down here on, on a given Friday. And we're calling this show Making a Place for Workers on Call. Okay, um, the first is I want to, you know, I want, so nobody be surprised when you start talking, you're gonna, you're gonna, you're not from Cincinnati. No, I'm not, I'm from London. So yeah, there's, uh, yeah. yeah, people seem to, uh, seem to notice that somehow. Yeah, yeah, well, I, I couldn't help you but notice that I'm real sensitive to that, yeah. <laughs> and you will be too. Right. And somewhere in your past is the London School of Economics. How uh, did yeah. that get involved? Uh, yeah, I went to London School of Economics. I think I went there mostly uh, so I didn't have to study economics. It has a unique program where uh, almost everyone graduates with an economics degree and you don't have to really do <laughs> economics. So uh, that suited me down to the ground. <laughs> this reminds me of, of uh, uh, David McLean. He used to be the uh, president of the University of Hawaii and he, he uh, came out of MIT. But in MIT he studied accounting or something. Right, or right. Actually he studied economics. So economics. So, so at MIT. And everyone's still trying to figure out what economics really means. Yeah, that's so. true. It's, a, it's not a science. It's not. No. So anyway, so what did you study there exactly? Economics. Oh. <laughs> Except really that okay. meant anthropology, philosophy, psychology, and everything else I could uh, study that wasn't economics. Well, you know, in a word, what do you think of the London School of uh, Economics? Uh, it's a great school. I mean, it really is a, a, a fantastic. A lot of uh, foreign students, a lot of American students there. Um, it's a place, it's really a great place to meet people who are going on into business, into finance, into non-profits. Uh, it's, it's, it's a think tank. I mean, it's a think tank at a bachelor level. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it's global, isn't it? I mean, it's students from everywhere. Students from everywhere. I mean, London's such an international hub, and the London School of Economics is an exploded version of that. Did I tell you that my secretary used to be, was a student at the London School of Economics? No, you didn't. In a very classy office. Maybe I yeah. dated her. Could be, could be, oh, it has to be 19, <laughs> early 90s maybe. Early 90s. Yeah, yeah. When did you go? Uh, I graduated there in 93. Could have been. Mm -hmm. Could have been. <laughs> could have been. We, we still could be right for each other. <laughs> so, so if London is so good, why, why did you leave London? Um, you know, I've always been interested in travel, and so uh, I, I traveled pretty soon after I left college. I actually uh, studied in China for a year, learned Mandarin Chinese, and then that sort of propelled me into uh, Asian life. And um, I'm American from birth, dual national. My mother was American from New York. So um, uh, many years ago, I had a friend who moved to the North Shore in Hawaii, and I went to visit her and pretty much got out of the airport in Honolulu and said, what? You know, I can live here. I can, I can move here. I can stay. I can stay here. You know. So um, it was. It wasn't very long before I made that move, and um, and Hawaii has just been wonderful to me. Ten years here. Ten years. Yeah, fantastic. What, what have you done in the ten years? Um, lay, you know what everyone does here, lay on the beach, be a complete bum, uh, yeah, no, <laughs> worked my ass off, um, uh, I, I, I've been, I've started three companies on, on the islands here, a construction company at first, um, and then more recently two tech related companies, the first one in social media marketing, and then um, since then a customer applications and web design company, and uh, you know it's, it's a great place. My clients are all over the world. No one really minds that I'm here, except that they can't talk to me in the morning. So, you know, they have to wait till late morning to talk to me, and I have to talk to them early. So there's a few, you know, there's a few phone times the phone goes at three in the morning, and uh, there's a few calls I have to be conference calls. I got to be, you know, up before the sun is. But otherwise, uh, you know, it's a great place. A lot of excellent people here. People really don't know the the, the human resource that is on the islands and um, the quality of work and, and the business ethos and, you know, more importantly, the, the sense of um, the sense of the islands, the, the sense of a lot of people are very respectful, polite with each other. Uh, I think that's a possible thing in business. I really do. I, I, I want to pursue that, though. I mean, so, sure. you know, Hawaii has a rep. We will get to the topic about, about uh, work, workers on call. Sure. And, this is, we'll get and I guess that's the fourth company in the, in the, since you've come. That's right, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Serial so entrepreneur, I'm Yeah, I guess so. Mm -hmm. Sorry about that. Well, not sorry about that. Good thing. But, you know, I just uh, you say that the human resources here 
are good, and the people are good. Uh, you know, a lot of people think that, uh, you know, we have, um, you know, Polynesian paralysis and all that, and uh, we don't work that hard, and uh, we can't stay focused on things, and we are not into education as much as we should be, no. uh, and, we, and we do this cradle-to-grave, one-job-only sort of non-innovative life, a lot of people. Um, and, and so the, and, and the workforce is highly unionized, which, you know, right. make, makes for a problem for entrepreneurs. And the government is bureaucratic. Now, you see, no, none of that applies to what no, you're I doing. No, I definitely don't say none of that applies. All of that's true. Um, <laughs> okay. <laughs> all of that is absolutely true. There are a lot of systemic problems in Hawaii. Um, you described a good number of them. At the same time, there are a group of people who are involved in entrepreneurship. I mean, we're in the Blue Startups program right now. Oh, that's, are you? Yeah, it's an accelerator. Okay, I want to hear more about how that worked for you. Yeah, we're in uh, season two, I feel like, you know, about to get kicked oh, off you the were the original or cohort? No, the original cohort was last year. We were the second oh, cohort. Oh, the, the one just selected. Yeah, the one just the, selected. This, the great seven, the fabulous the seven. The fabulous so seven. Uh, 200 yeah. companies applied. Only seven okay. survived. Okay, okay. So, um, th you know, there's programs like that that are, that are happening here, and, th and there are people who are involved in tech. Um, you know, I was at the uh, Pacific Business News uh, tech breakfast the other day and I met three fabulously smart people, the rest of them. Um, no, some great people. We're not naming names. We're not naming names. So you'll have to, all the three of you. That's you. Um, you know who you, you are. You know who you are. But yeah, I mean, great people who are you know using tech to solve real life problems. Uh, smart people. You know, a lot of smart people. So. Um, Tech people tend to be problem solvers and you know flexible, engaged people. And so, yes, while someone over here might be you know a government union worker f for their whole life, great. There, there's plenty of that everywhere, right? That's that. It's That's just true. It's just what what we need to have is the the programs, the opportunities. And look, I mean, Honolulu is a busy city, a lot of people, there's a lot of marketplaces to make money. Uh, if you can't make money in a city of three million, you know, what, there must be something wrong. There are lots of opportunities to do all kinds of businesses everywhere you are. One million. Oh, is it one million? Yeah. Oh, I Sorry. It, you know, really? It feels it's like It's my three job million. to point that out. It yeah. feels <laughs> like three million. How, is, how are there only one? How are you telling me? Um, yeah, we just... Maybe I happened to discover the other two million. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. all. They're, they're just, they've been hiding. They're outside the huge wall we built uh, to keep the one million in. But yeah, there's lots of opportunities um, here to, to do good things, to make change, and, and certainly for tech. Well, you know, let me, let me do more of, of, you know, the gadfly with you. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. <Push it. laughs> you know, um, tech tech was getting a pretty good start under Act 221 yep. uh, in the, la the last part of the uh, previous century, if you will. Mm -hmm. um, and in the, you know, the first couple of years into the this century and, uh, and, and then it sort of hit a snag and uh, politically it got, it got wiped out, you know, mm. wiped out. And, and it, it did have an effect. I mean, uh, sure. there, there were, you know, allegations of abuse and, and uh, not a very good attempt to curb the abuse. You know, they threw out the baby with the bathwater is what happened. Right. Uh, or does it go the other way? Whatever. And so uh, that was actually very encouraging for young tech entrepreneurs, that, right. that, that act. Yeah. Uh, and there was precious little else that was encouraging for them. But on the basis of that, they came back. They formed businesses. They got capital, which is not easy to get. You'll agree. Yes. Um, and they and they had the rudiments of what looked like was going to be an actual tech industry. Why is that important? Uh, and I'm writing about this right now. Is that you know we have a mono economy. Yeah. It's not very diversified. And our talk about diversification has been no more or less than talk. And our ability to generate the uh, what do we call it the the product of a diversified economy and and thus pay for all the infrastructure we need lots mm -hmm. of things that we need to do um, we we don't have the money and we don't have the money because we don't have a diversified economy and we don't have a diversified economy because we haven't made enough progress in building a tech industry you're part of that and God will shine down upon you thank you uh, <laughs> I'll take all the blessings I can get but, but you know it's a question of degree. Right. 
And, um, you know, my theory, I like your thoughts about it, my theory is that, my, my firm belief, is that we are only going to be able to build and pay for that infrastructure that we need if we have more than a hotel economy. Hotel economy, you know, the profits go somewhere else. The only thing that stays here is the transient accommodation tax and minimum wage jobs. This is not enough. Uh, so we need we need to you know build the economy if we're going to pay the bills, mm -hmm. and so the tech industry is the only way that I can think of you know to actually do that to you know develop that kind of nascent power right. of, of, a, of a diversified economy. Uh, thoughts? Yeah, I mean there are definitely some challenges. Uh, obviously, capital is a big one for an entrepreneur. You know, the first thing, you know, the big the big draw is going to be uh, how do you grow your business and how do you finance growing your business and clearly. In this market, you know, a lot of businesses do go to the Bay Area, especially in my in the startup area. Um, they go to the Bay because that's the most likely place to get the, the the financial capital. So that that is a problem. At the same time, you know, I'm a firm believer in human beings as being the ultimate, uh, you know, form of capitalism, the ultimate form of development. And no matter what country you take in the world, every country has different challenges. But there are uh, billionaires in India, and there are billionaires in China. And, there, and those, those economies don't have uh, enormous resources that we do to develop as an entrepreneur. So my feeling is that just because it's difficult certainly doesn't mean that it's impossible. And really what it comes down to is, is people. And if you if you have the people and the energy that you know to develop business, then there'll be success no matter where you are. It, okay, I'm, really not, I'm not letting you off easy on this. Okay, okay. Sorry. On this, so uh, what step? At one? the same time, I'm concerned. You know, you mentioned that that you know that act went away, and with it the money. But you know, I I'm concerned about uh, any capitalist environment that becomes sort of welfare capitalism. That was a, a tax matching dollars and it meant that people who weren't necessarily that interested in tech put money into it because the risk model was was so much lower. I wouldn't disagree. Okay, so I don't I, I mean while that's valuable and sure, you know, if you want to cut me a check, I don't really care why. At the same time, I do. I, I want I want there to be support for tech because tech is valuable. And not just because you're getting a tax cut. Uh, otherwise, it's sort of what is it? Food stamps for tech? That's not. That's okay, not. I mean uh, that's that's and that's got, challenging. And we've got a new story here. Monday morning, you know, Monday yeah. we've got an open. On oh, Monday, I could return here and I could spend this entire show asking you to give me money for my company. So I, I oh, yeah, the change in, in the securities laws. Right, the securities laws. So on Monday, I'm. We can talk to, about that, right? Uh, we can talk about it, but, but I can't, can't ask, ask for, any for money. money yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can ask. Can't ask for any money. You can ask for money. For I'm not me. doing that. Yeah, okay, okay. <laughs> okay, but then I'm going to step onto a national arena. Then it doesn't matter because from Monday on, I can literally come on this show and say, "Hey, folks, this is my business. This is what I'm trying to raise." I can't do that now, so I won't talk about but that anymore. We can do it together. We can do Maybe it together. sometime we'll after Monday. We can hold Monday is one day away. It's, you know, it's so close. This is a great thing. <laughs> You're right, though. I mean, capital is everything, and that's why 221 was so interesting yes. because it provided a lot of capital, and arguably it provided billions of dollars of capital yeah. by, by whatever mechanism there was. And I agree there are questions about the bona fides of the people who gave in to capital, but right. fact is, you know. It was capital was capital and without it you know there is no there you can quote me on this no capital no tech industry about that right. simple but a tech industry is different than a mom and pop shoe store mm -hmm. because the tech industry can make billions that's and, true. and that makes it different that's true now at the same time that you we're seeing some capital move in the hawaii state government got 50 million dollars in federal money that they are allowed to put through private venture capital and if you look at the program i'm in blue startups you know i i did 30 just, million uh, really, I don't know, maybe we're talking about different things. You know, programs. I think it's one million people, so uh, maybe my, okay, you know, uh, my whatever, numbers yeah, are higher. Some, some, lower. some tens we'll agree of to millions. Disagree. Yeah. Now, some your millions. startup thing is really small money, though. Isn't it's it? really small money, but if you look at the numbers, the, the private money was matched by the state money, which, you know, it's really the federal money coming in to support that. So, yes, it's small numbers, and, I, and I'd love to see more. Trust me, as the CEO, I'm the get money guy. Uh, I want to get money, you know. But That's you have true. to be realistic about, okay, what are the resources here? What are the resources outside? Who can I, I mean, business is all about connection. Yes, I'm going to be connected ultimately with people in the Bay Area, but I, my roots are here, my family, my friends, my business, my partner in the business. So I'm gonna do what I can to, you know, stay in Hawaii and 
my business is an outsource business anyway. I mean, my yeah. workers are all over the world. Yeah, so. me too. I'm going to do what I can to have this break. <laughs> well, we, we're going to have a <laughs> That's Graham Silverman, okay? And he's with Workers on Call. We, we're ambling down the road to discuss that. Oh, really? But for now, yes, I, it's true. <laughs> but for now, we're going to take a one-minute break. Stay right there. We'll be back. I'm Bill Spencer, president of the Hawaii Venture Capital Association. We do monthly luncheon programs with ThinkTech about things that matter to Hawaii entrepreneurs, investors, and business service providers. So join us on the fourth Thursday of every month at the Plaza Club. For information about upcoming events or to join our mailing list, visit hvca.org. See you there. with uh, Graham Silverman of Workers on Call, and we're still, just as before, we're still talking about money. We're talking about money as capital for the tech industry in the notion that the tech industry is critical for diversification, and the diversification is the only way to build an economy that can pay the bills. That's really stark, but it's true. Um, and if I didn't say it again, I'll, I'll more I'll I say it again, you know. And he agrees. Right. And he agrees. With everything he's saying. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Nice. <laughs> nice. <laughs> okay. So um, you're in the program, in the significant seven, let's call it program, in blue blue startups, mm -hmm. and you're going to get what I, you know, the word of the mouth, the rumor is you're going to get twenty thousand dollars. That's right. No, it's not word of mouth. It's it's, it's part of the deal. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Part you, of the you deal. shake the hands. You sign the papers. Okay. So yeah. first is what, what kind of a gauntlet was it to get get where you are in that program? Um, yeah, I mean, they had, as I said, they had 200 applicants um, signing up for seven spots, and one of those spots was actually taken already because uh, Hank Rogers, the, the founder, has got a wild card this year, which literally means he puts four people in a team together and on day one gives them a new idea that they have to turn into a business. So in terms of actual businesses applying, there were, there were six for, I mean, 200 for six. So. That's a good sign though, right, Jay? I mean, there's 200 businesses that want to do something, that have a project, that have something to work on. They're all serious. I don't know how ridiculous they were. I had rumors <laughs> about one, I'll tell you about okay. that later. Um, it involved mermaid tails, but I won't go into that. That's okay. Um, but, but yeah, I mean, okay, but there's, 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 a, there's a drive in this state, right? because there are incubators and accelerators all over the world that people are trying to compete to get into. Process of getting in, I mean, my process is always through people, connections. No, you can't do much in this world. So this was a connections thing? No, I mean, I filled out the form, but, you know, I, I, as the CEO, made, took my opportunities to talk to the people who were decision makers. And you could do that. It wasn't like a court where you can't talk to them. No, you no. You can pick up the phone. I, why do I feel this is part of your M.O.? It is part of my M.O. pick up the phone. And all entrepreneurs phone. should take a, you know, take a word from yeah. Graham over And the here. reason I'm sitting pick here the phone. is yeah. because I picked up an email. That's how he got here. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, we started <laughs> talking. And uh, I, I think being proactive is absolutely key. And, you know, no, none of these programs are worth anything unless, as the entrepreneur, you're going to take the opportunity and do absolutely everything you can to be a success. I mean, that's yeah. that's any business. Yeah, and that means that selling is. the business, making. I always, I always see it. You know, when I when I was actively practicing law as a as a wheel, okay. you know, and uh, it has spokes, and, and you have all it. these relationships you must uh, you know develop. Sometimes the your spoke takes you to another peripheral, you know, yeah. concentric wheel. But you've got to get out there, and you've got to make those connections. And this yeah. this guy in the middle, this guy in the middle, is the CEO. Yeah, 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 exactly. And I, you know, I mean, I have a team around me of really talented people. But my job is to keep them in a dark room programming, so that you know, and, and my you know, my job is to keep them quiet and and programming, and and go and get money so that they can continue making amazing products. So, yeah, you know, you, you definitely have to understand what your job description is in any company. And uh, we have a joke uh, that my CTO is my business partner, co-founder, and, you know, my job title is under Graham Silverman, it says, get money. And under Ted Coombs, it says, make product. So, you know, 
It's That's real. Beautiful. It's, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. It's simple. It's, it's very easy to understand. To and I can turn to him and go, "Hey, Ted, how's that product?" And he can turn to me and go, "Where's the how's money?" The money? Yeah. So, Each one needs the other. Ex exactly. <laughs> you know. And 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 the commitment, of course, is to the to the business, to the product itself, to making something really valuable and useful to people. And you know, there's another thing is like, what is what is your business about? Are you solving? You know, what problem are you solving? Let me you ask you that, yeah. Graham. What is your business about? What is my business? Funny you we're finally getting to that. Finally I, I okay. felt like that was never going to happen. <laughs> and, working our way and as soon as I'm about to tell you, the microphone drops off. It's, it's, a, a, it's a sign. <laughs> um, okay, so my business is a, is an on-demand outsourcing business. It, it helps connect employers with freelancers, and it solves the very large problem in the freelancing market of the time to hire. So. Right now, if you go, if you want to hire someone, if, if you say, I've got a job that I need done online, any kind of online job, I need a job done right now, you can expect to wait about a day, day and a half to actually start work. And you're going to spend a couple of hours of your time, you know, writing back and forwards to people and uh, waiting for emails and reading cover I letters. I say one out of six is worth it. You know, right. the other five, you're wasting your time. Right. Maybe so, that's a low pr uh, ratio, I don't know. You know, I, I, I put out a job the other day for a very simple, um, really low-end kind of data entry job. I got 424 applications. But not all from here. No, 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 very few. All, all over, around. All, all over around. the world, you know. Now, I, I'm never going to read 424 applications for a job. Uh, that's impossible. It's worthless. So then the next stage down is, OK, so uh, I. Uh, any of these top 50 people will do. It's it's simple. It's it's like you know Excel copy and paste. Let's let's take the simplest example. I still had to wait about 30 something hours to actually start work on that project because you know I've got to go back and forth and email. Maybe I get them onto Skype. Ultimately, they say, oh, "I'm sorry, Graham. It's actually you know nine o'clock at night in India, or it's 4:30 uh, in the Philippines, or it's you know." Anytime, and, and they say, "Help you right now." Yeah, I can't, I can't help you right now, but I'll, I'll email you in the morning. I'll Skype you in the morning, and then I'll begin. You know, a few years ago, we had a show with a young couple. They were out of um, uh, out of one of the schools locally. They met in a school, and they were pre-med students, and they went into IT instead. Right. And they they coded an app in the early days of the apps for some hotel function in Waikiki, and I asked them. I said, "Well, who, did you code that yourself?" I'm very impressed. I said, "No, we didn't code that ourselves. We had a, we had a bunch of programmers all over the place, especially in Yugoslavia. It was yes, or Czechoslovakia, somewhere right. far away, um, and they code, and we pay them by PayPal when mm -hmm. we receive and check the code." And we do that on a daily basis, and that's how we coded this application. Right. And I never heard of that before. I mean, yeah. that was really remarkable. But yeah. apparently, they could do that, and they were, you know, relatively young, but they had figured out how to do that. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, I don't know how fast it was in terms of identifying people that you trusted to give you, you know, reliable, well-written code. Right. Uh, so you're saying that you could find somebody like that and put them in traces, in in what thirty minutes? Yeah, thirty minutes or less. That's all. Good. Okay. Yeah. That certainly is a secret sauce. I mean, and, and it does That's reflect the fact that we move, we need to move fast we now. Do. We, do. we want it right away, you know. Yeah. I mean, I, I called a, a tradesperson this morning and they said they could get out to see the job in 20 days. Right. I said, no need. Yeah, yeah, There's yeah. no way I'm going to wait 20 minutes. Now, what days. happened when you called me today? How, how long did it take me to get down here? Four minutes. Four minutes, right. Yeah. We are impressed. Yeah. So, <laughs> Okay, so you know our area, our area of focus is online work, but the the reality is that there's an increasing number of small tasks that need to be done. Um, if you have a personal assistant who's sitting in the you know desk next to you, and you can afford her or his uh, employment, payroll, and health insurance, all the rest of it, that's fantastic. That's a great thing to have. But if you can't, what do you do? You have these series of tasks, and if you do them yourself, you are damaging your business. Yes, I agree with as that. Far as you I'm can't concerned. raise money. Uh, you can't do the things you're supposed to do. The, right. the title under your name. That, that My thing. title says get money. It doesn't say fill out spreadsheets. Yeah. Okay. So there's a there's a value loss to doing certain kind of jobs yourself, mm -hmm. but there's also a tremendous value loss to spending a time hiring. If I've got a, a two hour job and it takes me two hours of my time and, and I have to wait 35 hours. There's just no point doing it, right? Okay, two problems I see. Yeah. And I'm sure you've thought about this. Right. Uh, first is, um, you know, how much is that worth? Right. So we should talk about your so, business model and mm -hmm. your charges. And the other is, uh, do you really understand what I need? 
or you're going to go down the wrong path and hand me the, one of the five of the six, you know, one of the non-qualifying. Right, right, right. And it could be ten, I don't know, but let's say six for this no. discussion. Um, you know, can I count on you not only to deliver it quickly, but to deliver pretty much what I want? Right. Okay. So how do you how do you deal with those two sure. risks? Okay. So the, the the quality issue in the freelancing market is endemic. I mean, it, it, it is it is a serious problem, and. As a problem, it's not a problem that our business is attempting to solve as a standalone. Now, we are partnering with a company called Trueability, and they're in San Antonio, Texas, and that, that's, their, you know, that's their thing. It's self-testing, how do we qualify people? You say you can do this, okay, show me, you know. Um, I do that in less than 30 minutes? Well, their job is to qualify the person. Yeah. Now, now, they're qualified. Okay, you, you what, say, what do you mean? Well, they, they research. They it's, say, it's I'm, a PH, I'm a PHP programmer. I'm a great PHP programmer. I can program. Uh, these are all the things I can do. So they qualify before these guys get on your database. Yes, yeah, exactly. In advance. Right. So like they would that. be given a scoring system or a, a value system that says, you said you were a PHP pro programmer to the 10, but it turns out you were kind of a 6. And that's fine. But if I need a 6, you're my guy, and of course, your you know your price would reflect that. So they're attempting to solve the the quality issue, and it's a real issue, definitely is. I mean, you don't have any idea who this person is now. Well, you don't want your customers to be disappointed, that's for sure. You don't want your customers to, to be disappointed for sure. So at the same time, the the way it's been structured so far is to have a review system. So you've done a job, and uh, you like this guy. You thought his program was pretty good. You give him, you know, four and a half stars out of five, and you say, good job, he delivered the product. It's eBay. It's, it's eBay, eBay all people. over again. It's, Why doesn't Pierre Media do this? It's, it's it Amazon doesn't, you know? people, you know? It's like, here's the review, here's a five-star rating, here's a, here's a little bit of blurb about what I thought about this guy. And that forms a kind of a reputation for this worker. He's, he's had, look, I can see he's worked 200 hours for people, he's had 12 jobs, and everyone says he's pretty great. So and that, you share that? Yes. The customer gets to see yes, how many the stars, the ratings, all that. Absolutely. So that's that's the kind of uh, industry standard um, way of qualifying a worker. Um, so we're, we're not inventing the wheel on that front. It's, you know, like the, the, that's out there in the market, and we're working with that. Yeah, I hope you don't mind talking about this. You know, somebody could be knocking off your ideas right now. Somebody out there writing it all down. Are you worried so. about that, Grant? The secret sauce has been revealed already. No, not really. The secret. I'm not going to get too much into the secret sauce. We have some patent pending secret sauce, <laughs> and uh, and of course, you know, really, like I said before, the secret sauce is the people. It's it's um it's having enough people who are there and available to you. You know, if you, if you need to do a job and, and there's one guy and he's sleeping, there's no you can't hire anyone in 30 minutes. So, you know, this business is about creating a. a a critical mass of available workers. Okay, and, and, and on that really note, and before we get to the money question, so we coming on, you, you thought I might have How do we make I money? did not no, forget that's okay. that. Yeah. Okay, that's Graham Silverman, he's with Workers on Call, and now we're getting into the meat of it. That's uh, down the block here on Merchant Street, 55 Merchant, 55 as I recall. Street, yeah. We're calling the show Making a Place for Workers on Call. It's a think tech talk, I'm Jay Fidel, and we're gonna take a break. We'll be back in less than one minute. to thank our underwriters. Hawaiian Electric Company and its affiliates Maui Electric on Maui and Hawaii Electric Light Company on Hawaii Island are deeply committed to the communities they serve. Galen Ho is a senior executive of BAE Systems, a global defense, security, and aerospace company. The High Tech Development Corporation, the state's leading technology agency, attached to the Department of Business, Economic Development, and Tourism. Castle in Cook, Hawaii, with a time-honored legacy that spans more than 160 years and revolves around its mission of investing in Hawaii, creating communities, and providing for the needs of our state. Hawaii Gas, formerly the gas company, a proponent of the liquefied natural gas initiative, helping Hawaii achieve its transition to clean energy and a better energy future. Collateral Analytics, a Hawaii-based tech company empowering the real estate industry with greater and faster access to the tools and data they need make better informed property investment decisions. I'm Nicole Horry. Thanks so much for joining us on ThinkTech. I'm Maria Kashem. See you next time. We're back. We're live. We're ThinkTech Talks here on a given Friday in the 3 o'clock block. Uh, we're with Graham Silberman, mm, workers on call, down the block at 55 Merchant Street. And we're talking about his company. We're calling this Making a Place for Workers on Call. 
Um, you know, I just just one question though. You know, before we get to uh, you know more about the secret sauce or the business model of the charges, which I do want to cover, mm -hmm. leaving time for that. Sure. Uh, how did you have this idea? It was your idea, wasn't it? Yeah, I mean, this is this is to me the best kind of business idea comes out of a, a problem that you've had, not, yeah, not sure. something that someone else has had, but a problem you've had. And um, my last two businesses, uh, we we hired two hundred and fifty people in in less than three years, and. For a number of jobs, some a few hours, some a few days, all kind of keep you busy. And every time um, I found myself pushing my seat away from the computer and going, you know, "What <laughs> is this? This is ridiculous." You use expletives at that point. In I time did, I did, time. and and my partner the same. You know, we were as as the company grew, we spent an increasing amount of time uh, hiring. And it was becoming, you know, a real burden to the company to hire. And basically, both of us said, "This is, this is ridiculous." But so the idea is not an employment agency. No, it's, it's not an employment agency. Something other than that. It's not an employment agency. You know, an employment agency really is about putting people into the office, so in-house workers, and and the market is absolutely trending away from that. You know, I mean, Obamacare is going to make it a little bit more expensive for people to afford, you know, the insurance. Um, that in Hawaii, as you know, it's almost. I mean, there's already this bulk of paperwork about hiring in house, oh, you know, and all uh, kinds of legal obstacles created by an employment relationship. Right, right. So it's hard for both sides. You know? Exactly. So there's there's a sort of high value um, person. You know, the guy next door here. You know, he's doing an important job. You can't outsource this guy. But there's another job which is, let's say, in your business is, you know, organizing the content you've already created and putting it in a place and it's hours and hours and hours of work, but it's not particularly difficult work and anyone can do it. And that work, you're wasting money to, that you could put into some other area of your business if you do it in-house. So the trend is towards online hiring and to the extent that most of the industry people are saying that by 2020, we're looking at a third of all people hired in the world. Bypassing online. all of the burden, really, and making it making it directly on point, getting what you need and, and not, not stopping. Right. So so what's the user experience like? We will get to the money. What's the user experience like? I called you, I was like, Graham, you know, I need a PHP programmer, find right. me somebody in 30 minutes. Right. What happened? Well, you know, we're a marketplace, so I'm going to say, Jay, that's fabulous. Get on workers.com, you know, workers on <laughs> workersoncall.com and use the site because you're going to do it yourself model, right? You're not going to call I don't I'm have not, to call you. I'm not finding you anyone. Then I'm not, I don't want to chase you around. I'll write you a credit card. That's the, that's the bit I'm going to do. Give me the card. Actually, you've been very available on the phone, so I wouldn't complain about nice. that, but I understand. Yeah, so you're going to get on the site yourself and you're going to describe. Uh, you know, a simple job, you know, need a PHP programmer or I'm building a web page or something like that. And then the a little bit of our secret sauce is that we match by skills. Okay, so you you might say, uh, I need to build a website. I don't really know what I need for that. I mean, do you, do you know, some people who build websites, they don't know that they might need a designer separate from a programmer, separate from someone who's going to build a database. It depends. Maybe they need a mobile application development. So. You're going to say, I need this, and we're going to kind of help you figure out what the skills would be for that job. This is all on the website. Yes, yeah, all, all on the, the program. So it's all in the application. So you're going to say, I need to build a website, and we're going to say, okay, sounds like you need a designer, and you need a programmer, and maybe you need someone to help you with a database. And you go, okay, that sounds about right. And then we're going to match the people who are available with those skills to Who's you. Certified with those skills. Right. Right. Special you. badge. Okay, <laughs> Um, we're gonna we're gonna match you. Actually, we're gonna match you with everyone. You can you can decide how important it is to you because obviously, as their rating and rankings go up, their price goes up. So you're gonna say, well, this is kind of my budget. So I'm gonna try this guy for ten dollars an hour, or no, I want the best guy. Let's let's try this guy for sixty bucks or a hundred bucks an hour. So prices are all there on the website. They're, they're their prices. Choice. It's the, it's up to the and it's a marketplace. So you say, hey, I want to do this job, and they say, well, I charge fifteen bucks an hour. And you say, well, how about ten? How much? Well, there's an so you can be in direct contact with you this person. You can be person. in direct contact. Why don't I completely, you know, bypass you and ignore you and make a deal my own self and never talk to you again? Why? I mean, who is this guy? <laughs> he's, ru he's ruined my whole business. It's got okay, obviously, the you know the the real burden on you as the employer is paying. Okay, so yes, y you can take this person off into uh, you know, a dark little corner together and make a deal. But the reality is that um, you're going to have to manage their workflow. 
you're going to have to know that they are working on it. You're going to have to organize payment to them. They're probably in a different country to you. You're going to need to do some kind so of tax reporting. So you have report. supplemental services yes, then. Yes, right, right. Once which the which I need to use in order to manage the relationship. Right. That, and that's how we that's how we keep you bus doing business with us. Because let's face it, you do a job that takes three hours and you owe the guy 50 bucks. What, then you've got to go get a PayPal account, you've got to get his thing, you've got to sort that out. Did he do three hours work? How do you know that? So we, we this, this, the hiring moment is kind of the start, right? It's like, Boy, this is really, yeah, this is really sophisticated. Yeah, it's very sophisticated. This is more than an employment agency. That's why I'm the get money guy. Look at all the stuff so, I'm going to get I money for. So. So, it, it, you know, you flowered the whole thing out. It's way beyond just making the contact. It is. It's beyond matching, you know, the requirements uh, and the applicants. It is, for yeah. sure. And a lot of our technology is actually about moving money because in the end, the, you know, the work relationship, especially in two different countries, okay, you, you, you got a bank account in Hawaii, but they've got a bank account in the Ukraine, <laughs> and they want to get paid. They don't want to get paid, you know, in, in, in Why US dollars. Why can't I just do a PayPal with it myself? Some people want, want PayPal, but lots of people don't. I mean, I, I have a designer in the Ukraine. He can't take PayPal in the Ukraine. He needs to, and he, he doesn't want to get paid in a wire transfer because the local currency is, you know, worthless. So what do you send them, glotties in a, in a shoebox? <laughs> Close, <yeah. laughs> doubloons in a, in a, in a, in a galleon. Um, no, he, he gets paid with a, a service called Skrill. And Skrill is a, a, used to be money bookers, and that's the, that's the one of choice in the Ukraine. It's online. Yeah. Online it's Eastern European account. kind of thing. Right, yeah, exactly. It's good for him in that country. Yeah. Uh, another worker, um, you know, we have a, a programmer in Israel, and he prefers to get a wire transfer. Does he want a wire transfer in dollars? or you know? So we're going to manage that payment flow. You're, you're a bank. Or a bank. What a smart guy. It must be the London School it's, operating. You know, That's what I, we get here. here. They, they you know, you I well. thought I was a hiring company, and then I realized I was a bank. <laughs> And I was very happy to realize that yeah, actually, it's a great migration. It's a wonderful Perfect migration. I, I'm, I'm, I'm a bank without the big marble building. I don't know why, but I keep thinking of these storefront places in the big cities where they will discount your paycheck for you. You know, right. you walk in, and so, and so is it coming it's soon? Nothing, is it coming yeah, soon? yeah, it's nothing as dirty as that. But um, but I might be on my way. You know, that's such a great idea. I'm plug that in. I, I got to leave now. Gotta, yeah, hold on. I got to call my CTO. And find Just out tell him over here. How we do that. Yeah, you better be watching. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of opportunities to expand the business in terms of how people connect with each other. Um, but the, you know, the reality is, and, and let's talk a little bit about Hawaii for a minute, because you know, being a business in Hawaii is a challenge to find talent. Right? We started this conversation talking about how how hard it is for tech and the resources we do and don't have. And I think that one of the lessons that you know that anyone in this market as an employee or an employer can take is that freelancing is absolutely the future of work. Yes. No doubt about it. Right? It's absolutely future work. So if you are trying to get this uh, you know, union job or this job that is, is in an office, you know, you get in line. Right? Get in line with everyone else who's trying to apply for the same four jobs out of college. But if you build a freelancing business, you have a global market to bring that to. You can be anywhere. You know, I mean, while I'm hiring someone in the Ukraine, think about it from the other side. He's working with an American employer. He's living in a market that where he gets paid in foreign dollars at a higher rate than anyone he knows. I mean, my designer, you know, calls me and says he's 24 and he's buying himself a new car in the Ukraine. So because there's it, no limit on what he can do. Right. It's an amazing opportunity for him. So, you know, the, the message as, to me as well is, is get on sites like mine and think about how you can leverage your skills and talent online. You know, Americans have, we have one big thing in the world market is content, right? You cannot find someone. My same Ukraine designer can't write English content. You know, he can't write English language. He can't block. He can't, you know, he can do an amazing job in what he knows. but. If you're here and you have, you know, English language skills, there's no reason why you can't be a blogger, why you can't write content for people, advertising content, marketing content. It's amazing. It's an amazing opportunity. Well, you know, that's another kind of, you know, another kind of connection, isn't it? Yeah, you it know? is. Not just PHP now. No. But no, writing no, no. content. A lot sure. of people don't like to spend their time writing content. A lot of companies would rather have somebody write the copy. Isn't it true? Yeah. yeah writing yeah. isn't so easy, and and uh, well, you could put those people together too. Yeah. R write that down also. Yeah, I mean, outsourcing, outsourcing has become a bit of a dirty word, but the truth is it just means hiring you not in the office, 
I mean, that's really what it means because in practice, I hire lots of people who are American and Canadian to do work for me that involves content. Okay, what about, what about those, you know, uh, what about the tax problems? I mean, for example, uh, gee, uh, how do you make sure that the people involved, do you care that the people involved pay their respective taxes? Well, I mean, you know, these are contractors, they're, they're 1099 contractors, so there's, a, there's an obligation to the employer to let them know, uh, you know, what their information is, but ultimately it, the contractor pays. You're them. not going to handle it. You just tell them that's it. It's there's, it, there's basic they're reporting. On their own. Okay. Yeah, there's basic reporting that needs to happen, but the contract themselves is going to take care. Of so it. is this a one-shot deal where the guy comes to you, the employer comes to you? Like using that term loosely, I mean the, the, the person on the contractor side of sure. the independent contractor relationship yeah, yeah. comes to you and says, uh, Graham. Um, you know, we want this one job uh, and have a nice day when we get, you know, we get the guy, we set it up, uh, you handle, you know, the money, whatever it right. is to make you shape that up. Or do you have, you know, established clients or this, maybe it's a, a question of what you will have, you know, yeah. maybe it's early for this, but you have established clients and uh, you handle all of their work. You handle dozens, hundreds, who knows how many of these relationships yeah. for them. You handle their, most of their workforce. Yeah. Uh, and you characterize it in your arrangement so that it can it can be off his desk and on yours. Yeah, I mean, what, I, what's the model? I don't know anyone who starts outsourcing and stops. Yeah, I mean, yeah. it, unless they're an extremely wealthy company, uh, almost everyone who starts outsourcing uh, starts working with freelancers realizes that. You know, that's the only way they can go. And if your business is growing, uh, that becomes even more critical. I mean, estimates in the market are it's about 80% cheaper for a business to freelance, to do everything with freelancers. Um, I certainly know that the, the product that we've built, the quality of the product we've built, could not have been built if I had used exclusively American um, designers, programmers, whatever. So I'm getting a far... I mean your website? Yeah, my website, my program, my, you know, everything about it was built by, you know, people around the world who I simply, as a startup, as a, as a startup, I could not afford to do that. Not, not, not one person. You didn't contract the whole thing out to one person. You contract little pieces out. No, little pieces function. out. Yeah. So, and, and that's work, workersoncall.com. Mm -hmm. yeah. What happens if the worker on call does a lousy job what happens if he breaches? What happens if he if he makes deceptive statements uh, regarding how much money he's due? Uh, what happens if he you know gets in some kind of trouble and becomes less than productive or functional? Right. Uh, do you handle the termination of that relationship? We actually have a giant spanking machine that, that kicks in at that point. Yeah, it's a wooden paddle and it. No. Um, <laughs> what country did you go to get that one? <laughs> yeah, exactly. We're not going to do we that. We outsource the making of it. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I mean the the user the use the employer uh, worker relationship is defined, um, and there are there okay so there are certain protections that we can offer, and the big one is tracking work. So you say uh, you know you want to hire me, and you want to know that I'm doing that work. So I I'm going to use the workers on call program to to log my time and show it will take screenshots of everything I'm doing, so you can see okay this guy's really working on my project now. If I don't do a good job, you have the opportunity to say, hey. I can rate him. Yeah, well, you certainly can rate the guy. And in fact, you want that because that's the number of stars that you use to, to, to you know, show him the next time. Definitely. You yeah. know, the, the uh, Pierre Omidyar uh, eBay yeah. approach. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, you're going to have you're gonna have a few different choices. So the first one is, well, let's make sure the guy did the work. Like, is he actually online? Is he yeah. working? Yeah. The next one is, Let's. You can offer a view that you know. Really, I mean, let, let's face it. You're going to slam the guy. I mean, you know, if you're okay. not happy with his work, you're going to say to him, "Hey, you need to either give me a refund here, or I'm going to give you a pretty bad review." And then ultimately, on on the financial side, you can say, "Well, I'm not happy with this guy's work, and you know, th there's a financial repercussion to him." But beyond that, it is a relationship between the two of you. You know, we're a platform. Right? We yeah. we offer the ability. We're putting two people together. But yeah. you're building the algorithm to rate him. Yes. Yeah. So it's not just uh, you know that he was certified in PHP. It's that he he produced on time. He yeah. produced quality stuff. He sure. was responsive in answering questions. And yeah. That he didn't cheat on the bills and this and that and all of those things, all of those factors, the things that he has produced through you, right? right? 
are part of his rating. I mean, if this isn't the case, you should make a note of this. If yep. this isn't, you know, so his rating is a very sophisticated algorithm, yeah? His rating is actually a combination of a rating that he gets on our site, and it's also ratings that he might have on the other site. So he can actually import his existing ratings elsewhere into our site. So we, we have the most advanced one in that way. All the other sites say, we're a standalone site and only our ratings are visible. But our site says, well, you know, wherever you've got ratings, bring them in. Let's start with a, so you can see, you know, this Odas Elance freelancer profile, all of them, and compare and say, okay, it looks like he says who, you know, he is who he says he is. And then we give him a value on top of that that says, um, is he available? You know, how often is he available? What skills does he have? So we're going to use some artificial intelligence to, you know, create a metric around You're using him. all the technology you can. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. How many, what kind of inventory do you have right now? Uh, of workers? Yeah. Uh, we have 500 agencies right now that represent, well... In individuals. Oh, I don't know the number of individuals. In, in the freelancing market, there tends to be a lot of eight, what they call agencies, and an agency is just a group of people. So, you know, this guy in Ukraine might have four people working for him. Oh, there. I see. Yeah, so yeah. So you might have the same guy by virtue of more than one agency. Yeah, absolutely. It's not exclusive. Sure. Yeah. Okay, the last question. We only have a minute left. Sure, sure. How much? What does it cost me? What does it cost you? It, it's absolutely about the deal you make with the guy. But no, no, what do you get? Oh, what do I get? Well, we get 10% of the commission of, of what You get a commission of 10% yep. of whatever I pay him in gross. Yeah. Okay. All right. Not bad. Not so bad. All right. Grand Silverman, Workers on Call. Check it out. Workersoncall.com. Making a place for Workers on Call here on Think Tech Talks. Graham will be back. I hope so. Thank you, Graham. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Pleasure. <laughs>